That was probably really loud. <laughs> it wasn't super loud, but I, I like forgot how to buzz. It's embarrassing. I like how we have conch cells. We both have conch cells. Like, mm -hmm. That are cut to, to be trumpets. Because they don't come with the, with the top cut off. They don't come with what? Does your well, yeah, with it, yeah, with this cutoff, so that yeah. they can be played. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like That's if you hilarious. ask the average math teacher, they will not have a conch cell. Yet we I both have like, conch cells. I feel like we should make that survey. I think that that should happen. A survey with the students or a survey with other math teachers? Other math teachers. Okay, we will. Yeah. All right, so coming at you next time, how many math teachers at Blair own a playable conch? Then we can also figure out how many own a non-playable conch, which is probably smaller than playable conch. All right, so you're mad at you me. Do you want to see my pineapple? You brought a pineapple? Yep, but it doesn't have Better a head because it's from, it's from, uh, oh, you have so many pineapples. <laughs> wow. All right, why are we, so you wanted to do space because here's the uh, lesson for today. Equations in space. In That's a space. reference to Muppets in space. Um, but why are we doing, uh, why did you uh, surrender to tropical? Because we were already doing it, but also it's so hot. It's so hot. Like, it's not even that hot. It's like 83 degrees, but it's April and it shouldn't be. There should be April showers. Then they can be hot with the Mayflowers. Mm. Anyways, equations in space. So today we are going to, you can hear me all right, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Today we are going to. Look at how to describe lines and planes in the 3D coordinate system. To do that, we're going to start with the 2D coordinate system. As I've made it clear, I like to do, start with 2D and then extend to 3D. Uh, but the ultimate goal, vector equations in 2D, we're going to look at the vector and parametric equations in 3D. So how to describe a, a, a two-dimensional object, a line, in three dimensions. Um, I guess like one dimensional, really. Um, and we'll get to the uh, the equation of a plane and uh, an alternative equation of a plane. And it looks like a jam-packed lesson, uh, but you'll see that all these things uh, kind of uh, stem intuitively from our, our previous understanding. So. Vector equations of lines. So when I say, what's the equation of a line, Mrs. Contreras, what do you say? What do you think? Uh, I think about a point and a slope. Yeah, point slope. Point slope is the best. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's the best in most contexts. It's not going to be the best in 3D. Um, what other forms do we have? Um, y equals mx plus b. What's that? A uh, slope intercept form? Slope int. And then what's the, what, oh, we just did in, in class, we just did the distance from a point to a line, I decided to do a quick thing in class, and we use the last of the three. Standard form. Standard form, ax plus by equals, plus c is equal to zero. So we have these three forms. Stan, d-a-r-d form. Um, but we are going to introduce two more forms of a line, like you didn't need another one. All right. So we have an example here. We have this line in space. I'm going to make it, I'm going to take my sunglasses off so I can see a little bit better. That's fair. I mean, it's, it's sunny where we are, but I got this really nifty uh, hat. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so let's see. Let's go with this red. So this I think is we line. Are at this, we're at the same beach, Mr. Kerr. We are. I can see you right over there. That's pretty cool. I recognize that palm tree. Yeah. That you, you have in your. Uh, um, so we have this line here. It's red. Um, and we can describe that um, using slopes and points. So that's what's going on in this paragraph. Suppose we want to write an equation of a line with a slope of one half um, and containing the point negative three, four. We can think of the slope one half as a position vector, which I have here. Let's go with uh, green, Kermit the Frog green. Like the slope of this line is like a vector. It's going in a specific direction. That's what slope kind of tells us. Um, this vector we call the direction vector. I'm going to use the letter D. Um, the direction vector of the line. Any scalar multiple of this vector would, uh, let's say any scalar multiple of this vector would be considered a direction vector. So 2, 1, 4, 2, 6, 3. 
Um, to specify all points on the line, we need to equate a general scalar multiple of the direction vector with a vector that can, contains negative three, four. That was a mouthful. Let's like just build this up with a picture. Okay. So um, can you describe a point on this red line using a vector? Um, let's see, where does it, so we have negative three, four. Uh, I could have done better than that. That's gonna be. So how would you describe the point negative three, four with a vector? Z, uh, we would need what? We would need to move the vector over. Hmm. Well, so you're, you're overthinking it. Okay. How do I, if I said, um, what vector best describes the point negative three, four, what would you say? Negative three, four. Negative three, four. Okay. Right. So let me, let me go ahead and write that. Let's go with a new color. Let's go with um, orange is too close to red. Let's go with purple. All right. So our goal here, as it is with describing lines, is to describe every point on the line with some sort of variable. So to get ourselves to the line, we have negative three, four. We are now on the line. Using vector addition, how might I describe the point? Let's go with, let's go with purple again. How would I describe the point um, negative one, five? That would be negative three, four plus our direction vector. And, you know, I really think that two, one is not scaled correctly. Mm -hmm. Doesn't yeah. look like it. Yeah. So, um, let me do this so we don't confuse ourselves. The, uh, the sneaky eraser in. Uh... Oh, yes. The not eraser eraser. The not eraser. All right, so there is our vector, uh, 2, 1. And to describe the point negative 1, 5, we have negative 3, 4 plus 2, 1. All right. We've now described two points, negative 3, 4, and negative 3, 4 plus 2, 1. What if I want to describe the point uh, 1, 6? Then you got to just scale up what's happening with 2, 1. Have a 2 times that. Two times that. So I can further describe. Um, so we have, we have, let me do this. Negative three, four is a point on the line. Negative three, four plus two, one is a point on the line. Negative three, four plus two times two, one is a point on the line. How can I describe all points on the line? Uh, can we just take what you have there and then I'm going to try writing and generalize it to negative three. Or why my handwriting got worse and more happened. Plus K. It happens when it gets really hot. Two, one, yes. Just starts breaking down. I went for a run yesterday, which was also hot. And I was like swimming through the, the ocean. I was going so slow. Mm. I like, so negative three, four, there, there's a three. Plus K times two plus one. That is the vector equation of this line. All right. And it doesn't just describe the points going to the right and up. If you plug a negative one in for K, you'll describe this point. Okay. And we can describe all points on the line with the equation that you've written there. I'm gonna go ahead and on the side, I'll throw green. I'm gonna do an X with a, uh, with an, uh, a vector symbol above it. Okay. Right. So do we need to say what K is? We should, you know, we can assume that it's all real numbers, but, but let's go ahead and write all real numbers. So um, an arbitrary vector that extends to our line can be described by the equation negative three, four plus K times two comma one. If you give me a K, it will describe a point on this line. If you give me all K, it will describe all points on the line, thus creating a line. Just like Y equals MX plus B does. You give me a bunch of X's, I give you a bunch of Y's, it describes a line. You give me a K, I give you a vector, it describes all the points on the line. Sweet. Not too bad. Um, general form of the vector equation of a line, given a point on the line and a vector parallel to the line, a vector that describes the slope. 
What would that be? Uh, so we need the point uh, x1, y1. x1, y1. And then we need to add k times a. k times a. And I'm going to write a1, a2. And that, and I, this x over here, that's, that, it's just, it's, it's the y. Maybe y would be a better one, but I'm, I'm using x. You give me, you give me a k, I give you a vector. That vector then, when you give me all the k's, it describes the line. Sweet. All right. But we know how to add vectors. So let me actually do this. Let me get rid of that, k, uh, that x that is a little bit confusing. Okay. Let me write x comma y. All right. Can you help me decompose this vector equation into um, the components being added together? Absolutely. So x is going to be x1 plus k times a1. I'm going to do then, a1k just out of, uh, out of preference. That's fair. It's totally reasonable. Mm -hmm. And then y equals y1 plus a2 times k. Boom. See, I flipped that for you. I like that. So these are called the parametric equations for a line. You give me a K, I give you an X and a Y. It's like two equations where you give me one thing and I give you two things. And this describes a line. So let's say I give you like um, X. I'm not going to use K just because there's a letter that we often use with parametric equations. Let's say I give you 2 plus 4T and Y is equal to 1 minus 2t. Give me a t. Uh, zero. Zero. So zero, plug it in. I get two and one. Two, comma one. Give me another t. Uh, one. One. So if I plug in one, I get six, negative one. One, two, three, four, five, six, negative one. Ooh. Two points make a line, but give me one more just to confirm that it is a line. Uh, one half. If I put, if I, if I, um, Plug, if you plug in one half, when we get something way over here, we have a problem. One half, oh, I like that. It's, it's, it's going to work not well with our numbers. One half, that's going to be two. One half comma four. Sorry, not one half comma four. If I plug in t equals one half, x ends up being four, and y ends up being zero. Mm -hmm. So we're not actually plugging one half on this um, equation, on right. this uh, line. It's one, uh, four comma zero. Boom. Because T is a different parameter. It's yeah. not our independent or dependent variable. It's just a different parameter. Yeah. Which is why we're calling it parametric equation. You beat me to it. Awesome. Yeah. Parametric equations. We have a parameter T that is um, graphing a, a, a X and Y relationship. Right. Um, T is equal to, we plugged in um, zero for that one. T is equal to one half for that one. T is equal to, what did we say? We plugged in one, right? Okay. So in a way, like the parametric equation is nice because not only does it give you a line, but it kind of gives you a direction too. Which makes sense because we're, we're making a, like a vector. Like we're starting it with a vector and then we're adding a vector. So we're going in a in the direction of direction. that vector. Yeah. What, what is my vector in this um, uh, example? Uh, two, one. So that's the uh, position vector, right? Mm -hmm. And then the vector that with the direction that we're going is, uh, uh, yes, yeah, that's what you were asking. Okay. Is yeah. uh, four, two, four. negative two. Yeah. So we're going in that direction and we're starting at two, one. That's our, that's our, that's our zero. Yeah. Cool. So um, these are closely tied parametric equations, vector equations. Vectors are where we're sitting right now, the unit we're in, but it's a nice little intro to parametric equations. It's where they come from. It's this idea of vectors being added. Um, real quick, can you help me eliminate the parameter T and get back to our point slope formula? Absolutely. So I think that what we should do is try to isolate T and then substitute it in. So let's, yeah, sure. So X sounds good. So we have t equals, let's see, x minus 2 all divided by positive 4. And then take that and put it in for t in our y equation. So we get y equals 1 minus negative 2 times x minus 2 over 4, which is, what is that? 1 minus. I'm going to do this. Plus 1 
and minus. Chop, chop. Nice. So we get negative x over 2 plus 1. Yes, right. Is it? It's over 2. And we have the x minus 2. That becomes a negative 1. Wow. Simple math is hard. Yep. Did I do, is everything I've written so far correct? Negative. Negative. Half. Yeah, that's two. good. So, that's and good. then we can distribute that negative. We get negative X over two. Uh -huh. We get a positive one plus one plus two. And that feels right. Look at our, look yeah. at our line. Mm -hmm. Y intercept at two, mm -hmm. slope negative one half. Bingo. Okay. So we can like, circulate between the form that we want. And parametrics nice for some reasons, vectors are nice for some reason, and slope intercept form and, and its, its buddies are nice for their own reasons. Boom. Oh, all right, so that's how we describe a line with vectors. Um, what is going, what have I just, have I been like, I haven't been crabbed. It's, you got vectored. <laughs> what is that? It's from Despicable Me. You know, someone the other day in class said, I got vectored and they referenced Despicable Me. I've never seen Despicable Me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because when you first asked what a vector is, like I quoted Despicable Me and I thought you knew it, but I guess not. It's okay. Cool. So there's a movie called Airplane where they okay. say, what's your vector, Victor? And that's oh, like, yeah. I think what I thought you were referencing. Oh, I see. A 1980s like comedy Less movie. Yeah, less school appropriate than that, that is true. That is true. Anyway, watch Despicable Me if you want vector references. Yes. <laughs> okay. So sweet. Now you know. I learn something about pop culture every day. That's not yep. necessarily true. This is like old pop culture, though. It's not as pop it's <laughs> historical culture. <laughs> okay. So we got um, some vector equations here. Now, why don't we go ahead? We did an example that I made off the dome. Let's go ahead and leave these two to be done later. Sounds good. Yeah. Boom. You everyone check out the um, the blank document if you want to do them or the answer key if you want to see the answers to them. Okay, this is why we have introduced the idea of vector equations of lines. Because if you want to describe a line in 3D, we have the space here, we have this line AB. It's really hard to do with just a slope and a point. Why, why would it be difficult to describe a line in a line, let me turn off my background. <laughs> I got my pen here. Mm -hmm. Why might it be hard to describe a line in space with just a slope and a point? Because you have more dimensions to deal with. Okay. So just like looking at one, like one aspect, like, cause it's hard to distinguish between, you know, looking at a line versus a plane like the and the rotation that, that it's like like my my finger my my finger my finger is my point it is not moving in space mm -hmm. and my slope is constantly let's let's go ahead and say one let's go up one over one mm -hmm. but i'm able to rotate it in in that third dimension so as a slope doesn't fully describe to us the line. Now there is a way to have like a Cartesian equation of a line in 3D. It's called the, um, I believe they're called the symmetric equations. We're not gonna get into that here. Look it up if you want to, journal idea. The symmetric equations of lines in, in 3D. But I think the, the superior way to describe a line is how we just did it in 2D. Let me stroll up a little bit. The vector and parametric equations of lines in three dimensions follow directly from their equations in two dimensions. Using a position vector to the line and a direction vector in the direction of the line, we can get the equation of that line. If you give me a, an origin in space, you get me to a line, and then you just give me a vector in the direction of the line, I got the line. The parametric equations for a line in 3D just follow straight up like they did in 2D. Right? We have a vector that gets us to the line. Let's go ahead and call that just like vector, I don't know, D for, uh, no, P, P for position. And then we're gonna make this vector right here, B, A, that'll be our direction vector. Can we change the color of that one? You wanna change the color of the direction vector? Yeah. Let me actually get rid of the orange then. 
and just cool. And then if we want a different point in the plane, we just alter the length of A. Uh, the, let me call it D. Our, our equation is x comma y comma z is equal to the position vector plus the direction vector times k. Sweet. Exactly the same equation. P now has three dimensions, A, B, C, or, or, or x1, y1, z1, and then D has three dimensions as well. Um, but these vectors and the fact that they point in a very specific direction, unlike slope, allows us to describe lines in space. Um, let's do it. Write the vector and parametric equations of a line containing one negative two, three and three, three, one. Okay. So we, do we care which one we start with? Um, I don't think so, right? Okay. So I'm feeling the three, three, one, just because I feel like I can write Three is better than I can write twos right now. So three, three, one. And then we got to add our direction vector times K. So our direction vector is what? So we're going from B to A. So that would be the A coordinates minus the B coordinates, right? Okay. So then I've got to, got to do two, <laughs> right? Because three it. to one is two. Three to one is negative two, right? Oh, negative two. Okay. Yeah, and the three to negative two is a negative five. All right. And one to three is two. So lots of twos. And your okay. twos are looking looking not that bad. Looking oh, good. Better great. than my twos. And then we put what a K in the yeah. right there is our scalar. Boom. Right. And then make it an equation for me. Uh, this equals X, Y, Z. And we got K is in our reals. And then if you plug in zero for K, you get three, three, one plus zero, 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 three, three, one. That's on the line. That's given. If you plug in one, you're going to go from three, three, one, and you're going to find yourself at one, negative two, three. But then if you plug in any scalar multiple, you're just going to be somewhere else on that line in the direction of uh, A and B. Boom. Right. Um, it says give us the parametric equation. So what's the equation for X? Uh, that'll be three minus two T. Yeah, well, let's go with K since that's the letter that you've oh, chosen. Okay. Parametric okay. equations don't require T. I just did T in that previous one because T is what I'm used to when I see parametric equations. My comedy flipped out a little bit. It's fine. Here we go. Sweet. Uh, y is three minus five K. So you did three. Three, and boom, boom. And then Z is one plus two K. Boom. But then now if you give me a K, I give you an X, Y, and a Z that is on that line. Nicely done. There are really cool uh, shapes and curves and stuff that you can do in parametric, specifically 3D parametric, if you just alter these. If you give me three linear equations, Will it be a line? I think so. I think if you give me three linear equations um, in parametric form, they will create a line. But if you like square one of the Ks, maybe square root one of the Ks, take the log of one of them. Oh man, you can get some weird looking shapes and it's really cool. So I encourage you all to go into Desmos and program a parametric equation grapher and have fun with it. Sweet. Um, Here's a new question, but I want to do it. I don't want to skip this one. Find the coordinates of the point where the line crosses the xy plane. So we have this equation. I'm going to rewrite your uh, equations down here. Boom. Mm -hmm. And we want to find the coordinate where this line intersects the xy plane. So let me go ahead and draw a 3D coordinate system. You don't want to like scroll yeah. up and then use the thing in there. Three, three, one. It's like right there. I guess I could, but I, th I, I got it. I got it. Right, cool. And then uh, negative two, negative five. This is hard to think about. So we are currently in that first octant, the only one of which I get to name. And we're going down in the x direction. So that'd be backwards. All right. So we're going backwards. 
we're going in the negative y direction and we're going in the positive z direction. So we're kind of like doing this. And at some point, we're going to pierce the xy plane. Mm -hmm. That is not the xy plane. This is the xy plane. Boom. The whole flat part. Not a bad drawing. I, I, if I do see myself, it's not the best, but it's not terrible. It's a good sketch. When does this thing pierce the xy plane? Isn't it when z is zero? Boom. It's as simple as that. Let's set z equal to zero. One so plus two k. So this k is, k this is the power of parametric. The power of parametric. Literation. <laughs> K, uh, is equal to. K equals negative one half. And then let's uh, back sub. What is Y going to be if Z is zero? Uh, three plus five halves, which is more than three. Three plus five, five halves, five five which half. is six halves, 11 halves, which is 5.5, 5, right? Mm -hmm. Not bad, 5.5. 5. And so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5.5. 5. And then uh, x. I think it's going to be 1. Oh, that's nice. 3 minus 2 times negative 1 half. Oh, wait, no. Is it going to be bigger? Oh, yeah. So we get four. 1 plus 3, 4. 4. And then so 1, 2, 3, 4. And my drawing was actually not that bad because we are piercing right there at, it's not the best, but you know. It's good enough. Okay, to my own horn. All right, four, 5.5, 5. zero. Sorry. You tooted your own horn in the beginning, Mr. Chicken. What did I do? You, you blew a horn. Oh, oh, oh. I was like, when did I brag at the beginning? I try not to brag too much. Okay. Oh, by the way, I saw Mr. Street this morning. Whoa. And he said, he said, we were talking. And then he said, your videos are funnier than mine. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know about that. But in my mind, I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's proceed. All right. We got the equation of a line in 3D. How about the equation of a plane in 3D? specifically the parametric equation of the plane, or while we're at it, the vector equation of the plane because they're very still loosely tied. We want to describe every point in this plane. I'm a broken record. What do you think I'm going to say? I don't know. Uh, Maybe I'm not a, a, make a vector and then get a direction. Yeah, let's get to the plane. Let's find a point in the plane and then find some directions. So do okay. you want to go to A, B, or C? I like A. Okay. So let's get ourselves to the plane. That is a vector. Let's call it, what do you want to call it? Vector A sub one, two, three. Vector A sub one, two, three. So we'll call it A is equal to A1, A2, A3. We'll have to be more creative with the other ones because well, I guess maybe not. All right, so we're, we're in the plane now. What we need to do now, and, and let me fix this so it looks a little bit better. We need to describe both the direction of B and the direction of C. So how do I do, with a vector addition, how can I, I describe the point B? Is it gonna be, well, like should we connect some of these points? Your vector A plus this vector gets me to B. What do you want to call this purple vector, B? Okay, so we have now described two points. We have A1, A2, A3. We've described that point, which is in the, we've described point A. We've described point B, not by going straight to B, but by taking A1, A2, A3 and adding B1, B2, B3. All right, let's go ahead and call it B1, B2, B3. Right. Can you give me another coordinate in the direction of B? 
Uh, can I we like do like a scalar? Mm -hmm. What do you want to multiply it by? Just for the sake of. Mm. How about how about this? How about this? What if I want this point right, right here? I'll call it B prime. So we just need to scale up. By by about what? By like a half. Yeah, right. Like, like one point five. So like three halves. Okay, so now we've described another point in the plane. We have mm -hmm. now described three points in the plane. A, B, and B prime. B prime came from vector plus. B getting scalar. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, what if we want uh, coordinate C? Well, we can't just use scalars with B, with vector B, because yeah, that cause... doesn't go in the direction we need it to. Mm -hmm. We need to kind of come off of that line. So should we make a new vector? I think so. How do we get to C? From either A or B, or B Let's prime, go. I guess. Yeah. Let's go from A. And I think you'll agree with me as we proceed. Um, let's call it C, just to be consistent. Are you okay with this color? It's okay. <laughs> it's a little light. It's a little carroty. <laughs> C1, C2, C3. We are now at the point uh, C by adding A and C. What if I want this point right here? Then we gotta scale down C by a little bit, like maybe half. So like A1, A2, A3 plus 0 0.5 times C1, T2, C3? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are slowly, and hopefully you start to see an equation appear describing a bunch of points in the plane. We've described, uh, C, B, B prime, A, let's go ahead and call this C prime. What if I want this point right here? Then I think we need to take A and add, I would say like 1.3 Cs. 1.3 Cs. And then maybe like 0.7 Bs. Let me uh, get that purple going. 0.7. Let's call this like um, omega, just because I'm feeling an omega. Wow. Ooh. Capital omega. <laughs> I don't know what the lowercase omega is. Um, yeah, you do. It's the funny W. Yeah, you're right. It's oh, yeah. Omega. yeah. It's like that. Uh, something, something. I did too many. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I just messed up on that. Yeah, it's like the W that has way too much curve going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a one, a two, a three, and you, you claim plus one. Let me do B first. You said like 0 0.7 Bs? I did. Mm -hmm. And then you said like 1.3 Cs? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if I want any point in the plane? Well, then we can just generalize what we're scaling B and C by to just any number. Because even when we didn't see like what if we want, even when we didn't see C, we were still adding zero times it. Yeah. So we need to oh, still yeah. get to the plane A one A two A three. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what you're doing. You're adding the zero C one. Yeah, yeah. Right, because that's what what we we're actually doing. We're just not adding. We're adding a zero scalar times that direction. And so we got A1, A2, A3, and then B1, B2, B3, and C1, C2, C3. And then we're scaling B and C. Mm -hmm. And B and C. Yeah. Check it online at bnc.com. Anyways, uh, what um, letters do you want to use to scale? Uh, J and K. No, we don't want to no, use Don't do J and K because those are our unit vectors. Let's do uh, M and N. M and N? No. Manna, manna. Manna. Boom. Right. And then it says, oh, wait, this whole thing was the parametric equation of a plane. We just got a vector equation of the plane, but what nah. would the parametric equation be? Oh, we just break it up. So we break get uh, X is A1 plus M times B1 or B1M. Thanks. Like that. And then uh, C1N 
And then similarly, y is a2 plus b2m plus c2n. And you got c already, or z already. Fantastic. Little uh, assembly line here. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Yep, that, that is the, uh, the parametric equations for a um, plane in three dimensions. You give me an M and an N. Now we have two variables, but we have two dimensions for a plane. You give me an M and an N, I give you a, uh, a coordinate in the plane. All right, um, write a vector and parameter. I can never say this word. It's one of the hardest words in math to say. Parameterized mm, equation nice. of the plane that contains the points, boom, boom, boom. I feel like that's just uh, plugging in the stuff that we had from before. You want to leave it? I think so. All right. Boom. Get yourself to the plane and then you and find two dimensions in your plane. And then you're uh, going to be on your way. All right. This is this is the exciting bit, though. It's very satisfying because now we've been doing a lot of uh, like adding in stuff and vectors. But uh, let's introduce back the dot product. All right. So. Um, I want you actually, I'm going to stop my share for a second. I want you to imagine, let me see if I have any uh, flat things. I have a, um, a folder here. This is a plane, right? Let's mm -hmm. pretend it's a plane. Yeah. Here is a vector. I do not mean to be using um, blue so much. What is true about this vector currently and my plane? They are only intersecting one time. Okay, they're only intersecting one time. And, but I, I could bend it, right? And it would still be intersecting once, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to go back to this position. Oh, they're perpendicular. They're perpendicular, right? So let's say I pick a point in my plane. Mary Kay, do you mind if I draw on this folder? Can you see that point right there? Not really, but I believe that it's there. Mary Kay says, I that it's just small. New plane, a piece of paper. New plane, a piece of paper. Let's see if I can. Uh... Do you want me to use a whiteboard, Mr. Clark? Yeah, I want you to use a whiteboard. All right. Well, hopefully it uh, it doesn't have um it doesn't uh, wash out. Oh. <laughs> oh, that, that, that is not working. All right, let's just go back to the uh, the document. I have a plane on the document. <laughs> okay. So we have a point um A in the plane, and we have a point B, a point C, a point P, P being any point, and then we have this vector n that you called it perpendicular to the plane. Mm -hmm. um, do you know why I'm using the letter N? Normal? Normal. All right, so we have this new vocabulary word that um, some people might be familiar with, um, but normal is just an, uh, a synonym for perpendicular. Orthogonal is another word that's often used as well. Orthogonal has a lot of other um, uses though, that it kind of extend a little bit further from the perpendicular as we know it. But we have this normal vector. What is true about the angle between this normal vector and any vector in the plane? It's 90. 90, right? It's perpendicular. It's perpendicular to any vector in the plane. So if you give me a vector in the plane and you dot it with a normal vector, you will, you must get zero. Mm -hmm. That is where the vector, uh, not the, sorry, the, the um, planar equation comes from. We take a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. If I have a vector in space, there is a unique plane that is, uh, that has the tail end of the vector and is perpendicular to that vector. And if we dot this vector with any vector in the plane, we get zero. So this is what happens. The Cartesian equation of the plane. We have our um, normal vector n, which is gonna be a, b, and c. It is perpendicular to any vector in the plane. 
We are given a point x naught, y naught, z naught. We're given some point. X, y, and z as any point in the plane. The vector AP is x minus x naught, y minus y naught, and z minus z naught. If I dot it with the normal vector, I get zero. And by dotting it, I just get A times X minus X naught, B times Y minus Y naught, C times C minus C naught is equal to zero. Doing a little bit of um, distribution, A times X, A times X naught, B, uh, B times Y, B times Y naught, C times Z, C times Z naught. Um, I end up getting AX plus BY plus CZ. How do I want to write this? Minus AX naught plus BY naught plus CZ naught equals zero. This is just a number. I'm going to call that D. The equation of a plane in 3D looks exactly like the equation of a line in 2D. AX plus BY plus CZ plus D is equal to the zero. We're, all we're doing is we're adding another dimension. Quick Four question. Equation in standard form. Yeah, so this is the standard equation of a, of a plane in 3D, similar to the standard equation of a line in 2D. Now. One more extension. What is A, B, and C? A, B, and C are the non-zero vector that's perpendicular. The perpendicular so vector, right? Thing. Right. If I give you the standard equation of a line, AX plus BY plus C is equal to zero, what do you think A and B are? The starting vector what do we call it do we call it p not necessarily not really the starting vector so think about it this way the if i have a, a line in 2d mm -hmm. and i have a vector perpendicular to that line oh, so i can normal. i can describe this line by dotting a b with any vector in the plane uh, in the line like a uh, x not y not um x y a, B dot X minus X, uh, X naught, comma, Y minus Y naught gives me the equation of a line in 2D. Sweet. So if I give you the standard equation of a line, 2X plus 3Y plus anything equals zero. Two, three is a perpendicular vector to that line. Just like A, B, and C are a perpendicular vector to the plane in 3D. We'll definitely get this document, this this specific, specifically this page out to everyone. It's it's nice to read through it, but that's how we construct the plane in 3D. We dot a normal vector with an arbitrary vector in the plane. That equals zero because the dot product of perpendicular things is zero. And that gives us AX plus BY plus CZ plus D is equal to zero. Woo, we got I want to do one practice problem just to like cement it a little bit, and then we'll be at it. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Vector 3, 4, negative 2 is perpendicular to the plane that contains the point 0, 1, 2. Find an equation for the plane. So we have 3x plus 4y minus 2z plus d. Equals 0, right? Equals 0, yes. So we Not need to figure out what, the, I forgot a y. We need to figure out what that d is. And then wasn't d just our like, I guess our dot product of the vector that we're starting, the, our perpendicular vector and x naught, y naught, z naught. That's a really good point. I never even thought about it that way. It's the dot product of the normal vector. It's minus the dot product. Minus. So d is equal to negative the dot product of the normal vector with the coordinate. Mm -hmm. Let's call it like, I don't know, p. Okay. position that was zero one two is kind of like our um, vertical shift or our y intercept in a way maybe it's we the, shouldn't call it p because it would be confusing with p and n is perpendicular and normal 
let's call it uh, A. Uh, a is also bad. <laughs> There's too many, not enough letters, too many things to describe. Uh, G. G. All right. All right. But I think, a, I think a more straightforward way is we have the equation of the line. We have one unknown and we have a coordinate that goes in. Just plug it in. Let's just plug it in. Three times zero plus four times one minus two times two plus D is equal to zero. It's the same thing that we were going to do. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. This is the dot product. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but you got four, zero. Oh, D is zero. That's anticlimactic. Ah, nice. <laughs> Three X plus four Y minus two Z equals zero is the a plane that goes through zero, one, two and is perpendicular to three, four, negative two. So I'm thinking three, four, negative two. And it's also going through zero, one, two, boom. It's this thing over here. That was all in my mind. I know that wasn't really necessarily helpful. But... And then you moved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the vector can be anywhere. Vectors don't have position. It's, it's uh, zero, one, two that tells us where the plane's going to be. The, 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 the tail of my pen is at zero, one, two. The pen is pointing in the direction of three, four, negative two. And the plane sits on top like my planar hat. That's unintentional. All right, I got another question here. Do you want to do it? Determine the equation of the line containing point negative three, two, one and perpendicular to the YZ plane. I guess so. It feels responsible to do it because I feel yeah, like we skipped a lot, but I don't know. I don't think we skipped too much here. Let's let's knock it out. The okay. perpen So it's perpendicular to the YZ plane. The YZ plane is this thing. And maybe it's nice, like, I'm gonna go down, mm -hmm. over. This is the YZ plane. So we're gonna be perpendicular to this thing. Oh, this is equation of a line, not a plane. Mm -hmm. it's equation of a line containing the point negative three, two, one, negative three, two, One. Mm -hmm. And it's perpendicular to this YZ plane. So what direction are we going in? Because we have a point now. We're Negative going three, two, one. In the direction of the X axis. Do you have a vector that is in the direction of the X axis? Uh, like negative three. All right. Right? Because now this line is going to go this way and come this way and then pierce. Oh, when, when we plug in one, we're going we're gonna to get, um, when we plug in negative one, we're going to get mm -hmm. that zero. Which is, is there like a projection happening then? We're projecting the vector onto the, X, Y plane at zero, two, one? Not really. I think we're just a line that's like shooting through space. We could have used any vector that had zero and zero in the uh, Y and Z. So we also could have done one. Which is I, right? Which is I. That's why I was doing this. Because oh. we could have used I, but it's okay. Negative three uh, has us going in a different direction. Our vector equations and parametric equations have this element of directionality to it as well. So negative three, we're kind of moving faster. Every time we increment T by one, we're gonna move three units instead of just one. Mm -hmm. And we're going in uh, the negative X direction. But we are perpendicular, so there it is. Oh, and it wants the, uh, that's the equation of the line. We could, we could write it in a, uh, parametric form too, if we wanted to, but whatever. I thought I was being lazy with uh, giving you negative three, zero, zero, because you just zeroed out X and Y. Now nah, you were being like 
extra, but in a good way. Okay. You gave us the you gave us the coordinate that gets us to the plane in one go. I like that instead of three goes if we choose that we had chosen I. All right, I hope my pictures uh, do uh, 3D justice. And with that, equations in space, 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 space. But there's no sound in space, the space is a vacuum. So there wouldn't be an echo, Mr. Kirk. Wait, before we close out, I'm back outside. I had to go, I had to go to my hotel to grab something, but I'm back. Mm -hmm. um, any words of wisdom? Eat fruit. Eat fruit. Where's that pineapple? This is going to be my closeout. I was just going to...